Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Airbus A320 Neo. This time we're going to look at doing a fully automated landing, an auto land in the A320 Neo today, uh, which is called a Cat 3B landing uh, and it basically means we're going to see if the aircraft can touch down without any input from ourselves. We're going to do nothing other than get the aircraft programmed to land at Manchester's runway 05 right and as you can see I've set the weather up to be as nasty as I, uh, I could possibly make it so hopefully we're going to see if this aircraft can land completely on its own now a cat 3b landing is basically a complete auto land uh, there are a couple of types of uh, couple of types of occasions when the a320 can do a complete auto landing there's a cat 3a auto land which is a little bit more common and for that we need to go into the performance page and you would have to select a uh, a decision height so a decision height is entered just here of 50 feet which means if you can't see the runway by 50 feet you would have to go around abandon the landing and uh, try again or certainly divert to uh, to your alternate but today we're not going to do that we're actually going to do the cat 3b landing which tells the aircraft that it will be in charge of the landing today so what we would normally do then is enter no decision height there is no need to give a decision because the aircraft is going to get us down to uh, to the ground and what you'd normally type in then is actually the words no and pop that in there but that is not allowed so all we can do in Maxwell Flight Simulator for the moment is leave that blank so in the approach page here I'm just going to enter in a couple of the uh, the weather details here so that it's got all the information that it needs uh, I think it was 270 at uh, 5 knots, something like that. Uh, but basically that's uh, not important. Um, this is really just about seeing if the aircraft is capable of making this landing. Now, I have done this a couple of times in the simulator just to test this out. And uh, what, we're, uh, what we have found is that whilst the aircraft can do it it's not exactly like it is in uh, in the real aircraft so there will be a couple of inconsistencies uh, and things that differ from the real a320 the first one is in a full cat 3b automated landing as soon as the uh, the aircraft gets to about 50 feet it enters the flare mode and the aircraft will flare itself to give you a nice gentle landing this aircraft does not do that it's uh, it's not quite there so it will be a hard landing there's no getting around that if we do not intervene at all which i don't really want to once if the aircraft can do it on its own then we are going to get quite a solid hard landing so if you're playing with the virtual passengers in self-loading cargo or something like that then uh, they're going to be a little bit upset with you so yep yeah, the real aircraft will do a flare this one uh, this one won't the other thing is once the aircraft gets to around 50 feet it will start to cut the throttle to idle uh, so the thrust levers would move back to, uh, would go to idle not physically not in the uh, not in the airbus so when we get to about 20 feet and the aircraft calls retard we would then have to move the thrust levers back to idle uh, that is what happens in the real aircraft however in the simulator aircraft it doesn't cut thrust power so we will have to start doing the uh, pulling the thrust levers back to idle ourselves from about 50 feet just so uh, just so it pulls back on the power and say the real aircraft it does it for you and you just have to physically move the levers the final difference is once this aircraft touches down the autopilot instantly disconnects in the real world the autopilot remains on until you turn it off so we need to be ready with the rudder uh, because as soon as we touch down the autopilot disconnects and we need to try and maintain the center line so I'm just going to start bringing the aircraft there around now to uh, to start to line up with Manchester's ILS and I'm going to enter 
the approach phase of the flight so confirm we're in the approach phase which means now that the thrust will start to reduce and we'll start to head towards our uh, our green dot speed so as we start to reduce speed we'll enter flaps one and there it is and I'm also going to start the descent to 3,000 feet so here we go and we'll just start to come round to the left as we begin to uh, to line up so as you can see here on the, uh, the flight display um, we've still got no decision height displayed that is correct if we're doing a fully automatic landing as I say if you're doing a cat 3a landing then you would uh, you would still have a decision height of 50 uh, of 50 feet now the other thing as well which differs from the real aircraft is if you are making a fully automatic landing then you would use both autopilot 1 and autopilot 2 on to make it a cat 3 dual landing where we can't do this in microsoft flight simulator we can only have one autopilot working at a time so it's going to be a cat 3 b single which isn't really a thing you can do cat 3 a singles that's permitted because you have that 50 feet decision height to make uh, the l decision at the last minute so let's turn the landing system on and we're 18 miles away so we'll turn the approach mode on just as we get a little bit closer and aligned with the and aligned with the ILS we want to try and give the uh, give the aircraft as much time as we can to establish itself fully on the ILS and it really is going to be a little nerve-wracking as we come in because I have set the weather before to be as bad as it can but for some reason today it seems to be even worse so I've never uh, never had it quite this bad before so I don't think we're going to see much of the runway at all until we um, hopefully gently land gently land on it that's not going to happen it is going to be a hard landing but there's no way around that at the moment so 15 miles away and what I have noticed is you don't want to in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 you don't want to hit the approach mode too soon you want to be a little bit uh, it's probably around here just so we're going to intercept this uh, this line out this is almost an ILS line here that you can see on the uh, navigation display so we'll just bring this around to the left a little bit and then we can start to intercept at about uh, at about 13 between 12 and 13 miles so whilst we're just waiting for that to happen this is what we're expecting to happen so at about 400 feet we should hear displayed should see here displayed on the FMA the words in green land if it doesn't then that's when real world pilots would go around and abort the landing at 50 feet we should see the words in green up here flare which tells us it's time to flare if you're doing a fully automatic landing with no decision height the aircraft should do that itself this one won't we already know that I'm just going to pull flaps three there <coughs> and slow down again and the other thing that we have or rather don't have is this in up item just here is actually an auto land light if that flashes up red then it means that there's something not quite right and we would have to abort the landing but that's not modeled in the, in the sim just yet okay so I'm just going to you can see the glide slope moving obviously we want to capture that from below so I'm just going to set a descent down to 2,000 feet 
we're obviously not flying a proper published uh, start or procedure here. I just want to get us onto the uh, onto the ILS and see how this approach works. So we'll just start to come around a little bit as well. And that's just pulling the nose up. Have to completely rely on your instruments as you would in real life in weather such as this. Okay, and now what we're going to do, once we've stabilised at 2,000 feet, we're going to hit the approach mode. So, glide slope and localizer in blue, so they're armed. We will alert the imaginary cabin. And glide slope and localizer mode now both active. So, with that in mind, gear down and full flaps, and I'm going to reduce the landing speed manually to 140. And here we are intercepting. Now, of course, the biggest task of the pilot in a fully automatic landing is to monitor the instruments and make sure that everything, absolutely everything, is accurate. Believe it or not, CAT 3B uh, airports and runways are not as common as you might think. So, CAT 3C, as you can see there, is because we've only got one autopilot enabled, we can't engage both autopilots here so it has to be a cat 3 single ideally in the real world whether such as this it would be a cat 3 double if you were doing just a cat 3 single you would always have a decision height of 50 feet entered and now we're just watching to make sure that we stay nicely aligned with the runway and of course the glide slope so remember at 400 feet we're looking for the words land at 50 feet it should say flare the real aircraft would then start to cut the thrust back to idle we would then have to move the thrust levers back to idle when it calls out retard however this aircraft does not do that we have to start moving the thrust levers back from 50 feet ourselves just so that we're at idle by the time retard is uh, is called just pull the speed back ever so slightly as we seem to be in a bit of a nose down attitude at the moment So we're getting closer, two miles to go, 700 feet, six twenty, and I still can't see anything out there. So this really is going to be a last minute coming into view of the runway. A quick look outside. Here we go, so 400 feet, we've got the land, next will be 50 feet, get ready to pull the thrust levers back from 50, now. It says flare. Oh! And we bounce down the runway. 
and then rollouts displayed. Okay, so that's why you don't attempt it perfectly like that with self-loading cargo passengers because you will bounce. What I have found is obviously if you'd have had that decision height of 50 feet in there for a, a uh, single Cat 3 landing, what you would have done then is you just saw the runway lights coming into view, you would then be able to take the autopilot off at 50 feet to continue the approach, you would then be able to manage the flare, which, as I said, the real aircraft does for you when you've got no decision height entered and it's doing the full uh, Cat 3B landing. But at the moment, the, uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator A320 fails dreadfully at that and you end up with uh, well, probably needing to replace parts of the landing gear. So there you go. Hope you found that useful. It is possible, but it still does require a little bit of input from you at the moment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Hit subscribe to, uh, to get more tutorials coming up and there's always live streams as well throughout the week of flights taking place. Hope to see you soon and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye bye.